No. All right. Um, so I heard from last section that lecture is behind in relation to um, to bonding. So that's kind of a good, kind of bad thing. Um, but to go over just a few things. So one of the uh, so chapter two is this this week's bonding assignment. Um, you guys are really going to be asked about um, functional groups. That's a big one, um, and uh, and a little bit of IR, which I'm going to touch on in terms of the exam. Um, you can really take an L on IR. Uh, you're not going to get any more than two or three questions on it, um, but it could be the difference between A and B. So I'm going to touch on it. Um, anyways, to just to introduce um, the concept of functional groups, it's really, it's what makes a molecule reactive. Um, so you're going to see soon in, when you get to reactions that when you just have a regular chain of carbons most of the time these things aren't going to react there's nothing to there's nothing electronegative the carbons have all their have have their full octet and so there's no reason for it to react and so you have to somehow have a functional group present and one of the most common ones is a alcohol so for some of you, this will be familiar. Some of the, some people it won't be, but this is the most common, one of the most common functional groups that you guys are going to see. Um, and so, one of the questions that he's going to ask on the exam, I don't know about bonding, but uh, on the exam, he's going to be, he's going to give you a molecule, and he's going to be like, "What the hell is in this molecule?" And he's going to give you a list of things to pick from. It's going to be alcohols, amides, whatever it may be. Um, but what I can tell you right now is that chapter two, along with very few other concepts is that chapter two functional groups flashcard them flashcard functional groups um there's probably a couple already made um on quizlet or whatever you guys probably have a group chat um share talk about it um uh jason said yeah <laughs> um but yeah flashcard functional groups memorize them you're gonna have to know them for the rest of your organic chem career um but the thing that some people get tricked up on is the classification. By classification, what I mean is primary, secondary, and tertiary. Um, so when it comes to alcohols, um, also, I don't really, I only get a little little bit of the, I only see a little bit of the comments as they come in. So I'm pretty casual. If you guys want to chime in or unmute and say something, feel free. But anyways, when it comes to classification, what we're really looking at is primary, secondary, tertiary. Um, and in terms of alcohols, we're looking at the carbon that's attached to the oxygen. Um, so the carbon that's attached to the oxygen is this carbon here. How many carbons is this attached to? Christy said one. One. All right. Yeah, you guys got it. So this carbon is only attached to one other carbon. And so we designate it as primary, which is often written like that. Intuitively, if you were to have something like this, again, with alcohols, we're looking at this carbon that's attached to the OH. So this carbon here, how many is this one attached to? Two. So it would be secondary and so on for tertiary. Um, sorry. Um, in contrast, nitrogens are direct attachments. So how many carbons are directly attached to the nitrogen? And just to give an example, uh, 
That is so annoying. I wish I had a pad. Um, how many carbons is this nitrogen attached to? Curtis says one. Anybody else think something else? So again, we're looking at, yeah, we're looking at direct attachments for, for the nitrogen. So this nitrogen is directly attached to one carbon. So we designate it as primary. Similarly, if you were to have something like this, you can have as big a complex thing as you want. For some reason, I can't find the meaning. Yeah, um, again, as I mentioned in the most recent um, message that I sent out, um, half of you, for some reason, are be able to join, half of you aren't. I'm going to take it up with IT and see what I can do. Um, um, and if it is an access on my issue, I'll handle it. If it's on a student issue, I'll let you guys know. Um, but to continue on, um, uh, looking at this nitrogen here. So, um, actual website. So try to go through Canvas. Um, and if that doesn't, like someone said, try to go through the website itself. You can, you can on the website itself, you still should be able to enter a, the password or the meeting ID. Um, so, in con like this one, we're looking at the direct attachment. So this nitrogen is directly attached to one other carbon. What would we designate this molecule as? This is a amine. If you guys are going to learn your, you guys are going to learn your uh, uh, functional group. So this is an amine. Is it primary, secondary, tertiary? What is it? Jalene says primary. Secondary, secondary, yeah. So secondary it is. So this nitrogen here is attached directly to this carbon and is attached directly to this carbon. That's why it's secondary. That's the main difference in what you're gonna have to nail in your head about the classification about the primary and secondary the difference between the nitrogens and oxygens the the oxygen the alcohols you're looking at the carbon um that's attached to the oh how many that is attached to you show the attachments again yeah so the alcohols you're looking at the carbon that's attached to the oh how many that carbon is attached to so this carbon that's attached to the oh is attached to only one other. Similarly, the secondary, this carbon is attached to the OH. How many carbons is this carbon attached to? Two others. In contrast, the nitrogen is directly attached to one. So the nitrogen, so nail it in your head, is direct attachments. How many carbons are directly bonded to this nitrogen? Right, this one is directly, only one carbon is directly attached to this nitrogen. This nitrogen, there's only there's two carbons that are directly attached to it. Does that make sense for everyone? I don't see the two carbons. So let's see if I need a different note. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna this. Anyways, so this nitrogen, this nitrogen here. This carbon here, let me redraw it. Let me just use something clear. This nitrogen is is it directly attached to one carbon, two carbons. Does the person that missed that see it? Okay. Like unlike this one, where this one is directly attached to, so it's gone. So when you're classifying nitrogens, it's only direct attachments, which can be a little confusing, and which is why this is an important concept. The oxygens, you're looking at how many the adjacent carbon is attached to. So just to redraw it. So 
So you're looking at this carbon here. How many is this one attached to? To others. That's that's what that's how you classify the alcohols. So you're looking at the adjacent carbons, so the not direct attachments like this one. This one is directly attached to two carbons. This one is the adjacent carbon that you're looking at. So the carbon that the O is attached to. How many is that carbon attached to? Two others. If I were to throw another bond on there, this carbon that the O is attached to, that carbon is attached to three other carbons. Is that a bit more clear? All right, again. So that's how you classify. Um, other than that, for the functional groups, definitely flashcard them. Um, some, some people get a little confused on a couple of them, so just to go over it a little bit. A carboxylic acid is a carbonyl group with an alcohol directly attached. So if you were given this, uh, this elaborate thing and you were to say what functional group is present, this here is a carboxylic acid, a carbonyl with an OH on it. This one here with nothing on it. If someone read ahead, does anybody know what this is? It is a carbonyl group, that is correct. Carboxylic acid is the first one. The carboxylic acid is the first one, yep. The, a C double bond O, and directly next to it is an OH, an alcohol, is a carboxylic acid, because this alcohol is, is acidic, and this is a carbonyl group, carboxylic acid. This group here is a ketone. So this is C double bond O with nothing other than carbons next to it is a ketone. The difference between an amide and an amine, we were drawing amines before, but instead of a carbon directly attached to this, if you were to have a nitrogen, this would be an amide instead of an amine, All right? Does that make sense? That's, those are really the only, it's these little slight differences. So it's def, again, it's definitely something that you guys want to flashcard, unlike the other concepts that you're really gonna have to understand. Um, these are something that you're definitely gonna have to um, just memorize, unfortunately. Um, another key concept that you guys are probably gonna see is really a general chemistry concept. Unfortunately, I hated gen chem, um, but polar, nonpolar, hydrophobic, hydrophilic. So if something is hydrophilic, meaning it likes water, correct? Water is polar. If you were to dissolve something in water, if you want a good solute, what kind of molecule would you want to throw into it? Would you want to throw into? Uh, would you want to throw in a nonpolar or a polar molecule in water if you want to dissolve it good? Polar, because like Tito and Hutch told ingrained in our heads, like dissolves like, um, and so, um, so yeah. Um, if you were to be given. Uh, really big you can this can it can be for anything so let me ask what what makes something polar Okay, Di dipole, yeah, dipole. So if something has a dipole moment, um, you know, in order to have a dipole, you have to have an electronegative group or atom, correct? Yeah, okay, yeah. So she also mentioned that something that cancels out. So an example of that, I believe it 
one of the examples is directly from the end of chapter problems is is this so this molecule here does this have a overall dipole or no no it's not polar no okay good it's not polar because its overall dipole cancels out so again going back to the hydrophilic and hydrophobic um, this portion of the molecule here is this the hydrophilic or the hydrophobic um, portion of the molecule hydrophilic um, yeah because hydrophilic because this is the polar portion of the molecule polar portion and because like dissolves like polar is going to react with the polar in this one this again is just a hydrocarbon not to get confused this is you know big and clunky but these are just hydrogens implied hydrogens so again these are uh, these are just hydrogen so this is just any hydrogen any hydrogen uh, any uh, hydrocarbon um, specifically without any functional groups or anything uh, electronegative on it is going to be nonpolar and therefore hydrophobic does that make sense for everybody that concept all right good another thing some of you have been exposed to it before. Some of you are, you definitely are going to see it in later chapters. Um, but this term cis and trans, you don't really have to know about it now. Um, but what, when it kind of relates to the canceling out of dipole moments. So here's a direct example from your textbook. I know a lot of you commented on that form I sent out. You guys want practice problems, and so this is a direct example from the textbook. So the question is basically asking which one has more of a dipole pull, left or right. Right, so, yep, you guys got it right. So this one, like that other example, the directionally, these fluorines are pulling in opposite directions, and so overall, this thing doesn't really have much of a dipole. It kind of cancels out. Unlike this one, where they're pulling in the same direction, has that extra oomph, and overall, it's going to have definitely more of a dipole pull relative to this one. So hopefully that makes sense. And if you're given the molecular formula, so like SO2 or like NH3, just draw it out. Draw out the Lewis structure um, like I like I am here. This one would be C2F2, H2. So if you're given something like that, just draw it out just so you can see if something really cancels out or not. That's, that's how I did it. Um, don't make it complicated. Um, some people really try to overthink things um, when really this is really a, a conceptual course. If you understand the underlying concepts, you can apply it to other questions. Um, something I didn't get to before um, in my other sections, so we started late, is <clears throat> is a boiling point. Um, it, it's sort of a general chemistry concept, but it, um, does anybody know, you can feel free to unmute if you want to answer, um, does anybody know what makes a higher boiling point versus a lower boiling point? So Christy thinks more branches equals a lower boiling point. Bond strength. And so I think I have an example here. 
all right, so here, so one of the first things that you can look at in terms of boiling point is um, hydrogen bonding. So what is hydrogen bonding? This was, you know, it's all good. Um, uh, so yeah, um, the more hydrogen bonding you got, you have in a molecule, the the higher the boiling point. So which so this one has hydrogen bonding because it's really anything that if you have an N, anything above an N attached to an H in the in the periodic table, anything attached to an N going to the right to the fluorine attached to an H is electronegative and has hydrogen bonding. Um, and so the more hydrogen hydrogen bonding that you have, the higher the boiling point. Someone also mentioned the branching. The more surface area that you have, the more the more heat that you're going to need. So the more surface area you have in a molecule, like this one, this one for example, here, this has more surface area. It's covering more area than this one, and so this one will have a higher boiling point. I mean that makes sense, right? You have more bonds to break, and so you need more energy to apply. In this case, is in the form of heat. Does that make sense for everyone? All right. So, really, the really the, when it comes, you said the more yeah, the more hydrogen bonding that you have, the higher the the higher the boiling point. Um, so for this one, just these two, they I believe they have the same. I didn't count it, but the same formula, same number of carbons, this and that. The main difference when it comes to boiling point is that this one has hydrogen bonding. This is an electronegative atom attached to an H. So this one has uh, like uh, hydrogen bonding, and so it has a higher boiling point. Hopefully that answered the question. Um, when it comes to melting point, um, really the thing that you got to keep in mind is compactness. Um, so looking at these ones for an example, all of these have hydrogen bonding. Um, all of them relatively have the same surface area. Some people confuse surface area versus compactness. It's a little confusing. Um, I'm sure there's videos on it, um, but because time is coming up, um, I don't really have much time to go into an explanation about it. But this one here is more compact than this one, right? You guys see that? This one here is more compact than this one. And so the more compact a molecule is, the higher the melting point. So that's really the only melting point thing you're gonna have to know is compactness. The less compact something is, the less melting point, the less of the melting point. The more compact it is, the more the higher the boiling point. Does everybody get that? And because time is coming up, like I mentioned in the in the beginning, if you guys want to take an L on it, you can for the exam. Because he's not going to ask any more than two or three questions on it. You're going to be given an IR table, um, and you can consult it. But it really doesn't come up. It doesn't really come much use um, if you don't know what you're looking at, right? Because an IR table doesn't show you what the things look like. Um, so this. If you look up IR specs, you're gonna get you see these all these complicated jagged things. He's not gonna give you something too complicated. You really have to know the main things. And so he's gonna give you a molecule. He's gonna there's gonna be peaks and valleys in it, and you have to recognize what is present. So an IR spectrum tells you what functional groups are present in the molecule, not exactly where they are, but just that they're there. So an OH is one of the most prominent things. If you guys miss it, that's really going to suck. It's an easy point. And the OH in alcohol, if there's an OH present in the molecule, this band is what you're going to see. Let me see, try to can I take it? Can I lose it? All right, yeah. So this OH, anything in a big hill-looking thing, 
above the 3000 mark. We have anything that looks like that. It's an alcohol. There's an alcohol present. So un unlike something that's more sharp in this, sometimes you're going to see it like this. That represents an NH, an NH2, an amine for that matter. Um, so again, you're, you're, the key thing here is remembering the three or four main ones and what they look like, and you should be set for almost all of these IR questions. Another big one is this one. Now, I don't mean big because it's a big peak, but it's one that you can easily get right or wrong. You have to recognize if the CO is present, there's going to be a peak around this 700 mark that looks long and strong. Um, uh, if something, if you have a molecule and it has this long sharp peak in the 700 area it is it represents a c double bond o does that make sense for everybody the main thing here is that you you you're able to identify what these things look like um because you're not really you're going to be given a picture of a molecule and you're going to be like what functional groups are present in in this molecule and so you have to know that these things represent those functional groups. Does that make sense for everyone? You're not going to get any more than like two or three questions on them. Um, so to close out, um, a lot of people panic about organic chem. I personally hated it, um, but it just so happened to be much better. I liked it a lot more than um, than gen chem, it's much more conceptual. And so one, one rule of thumb that I would keep in mind is a chapter a week, um, cause it is, it, it is a summer term. And so you're kind of taking 16, 15, 15, 16 weeks into 12, 11, 12. And because he is behind, um, you do want to keep on pace. Um, so a chapter a week, and just to give you guys some insight, he really tests off the, um, he really tests off the end of chapter questions. I personally, just being brutally honest, I didn't give a fuck about lecture. <laughs> I didn't go. Um, I didn't go to lecture. The only thing I went to lecture for was the quizzes, the extra credit quizzes. Um, how I learned the course, Jermaine, he's a great guy, gets a twinkle in his eye about organic chem, but can't teach like all of the chem teachers here. Um, sucks at teaching. And so really, the people that are teaching that are helping you guys in tutoring, we learned by using those resources. So attend your SI, use those SI sheets to help you answer the end of chapter questions. And if you can smoothly in answer the end of chapter questions, you guys will be set for the exam. So because literally in, I, mean, I don't know how it's going to, how it's going to look online, but on paper, literally it was just like modified from question 2.3 on the on the uh, in at the end of the chapter. So he really he if you can smoothly get through the end of chapter questions, um, you guys should be set. Um, and again, um, the really yeah keep keep uh, keep up with the material a chapter a week. So like this week he's behind in lecture, but with bonding this week will, is chapter two. That's what I'm covering today. Um, and some some people have asked uh, questions about the drawing. Use the link that Mark sent out. Um, I made sure to comment on it also, but it's really helpful. Um, you guys are gonna are bound to, and I guarantee it. I've seen it in every section um, in every semester. People have struggle with drawing. If you learn the ins and outs of the drawing, that's that can make or break um, the between a getting eight points and six points. Um, it can be tricky, but it's it's easy when you get the hang of it. Um, so definitely utilize that um, before you um, before you try to open up your assignment and get going. Um, so is, is there any other particular questions that anybody has? Not at the moment. 
about the chapter, about the chapter problems. Um, so, I mean, what about them? Um, again, use uh, we use the SI as a guide to take you through the the um, end the chapter problems. I mean, I have I have them sitting in front of me right here. Unfortunately, I it's not like I can post a picture up on this thing, but the main concepts that you guys are going to have to go over um, in chapter two and answer in the end of the chapter are what I went over today, which is you, you inevitably have to memorize your um, functional groups. So flashcard them. Um, but classification is a big one. Classification, you look at a molecule and you're able to identify all of the functional groups that are present in that, in that molecule. Um, another thing that they cover in the, in the chapter is, um, is the hydrophobic and hydrophilic. Um, so hopefully I made sense of that. Um, really, it's a gen chem concept, you know, things like water, if it's, if it's hydrophilic and it's, it contains, it, it, then it's polar, um, and it has electronegative atoms on it, um, like dissolved like, keep that in mind. Um, uh, other than other than that, it's the physical properties like the like the boiling point um, and melting point. Don't waste again. Don't waste time um, trying to learn the ins and outs of the specific things that he goes over in lecture. Don't try to spend hours taking notes. Focus on the problems and how to get through them. And if you can smoothly get through the end of chapter questions, you're set for the exam. Um, attendance. Uh, attendance in bonding or lecture? Um, bonding, uh, I personally am able to see who attended the the um, these sessions afterwards. Um, the system kind of gives me a rundown on who was there. Um, but again, this week I'm not going to be. I'm not going to worry about it much because half of you aren't weren't able to join. I don't really know why. But um, in terms of lecture, I've sent out a message before lecture. The attendance that you guys have is really attending OC or SI. This uh, for now, you guys only have to do one or the other, the 50 minutes. So attend one SI or attend the 50 minutes of OC, and you're set for um, for your weekly uh, extra credits. Um, but for bonding, do your best to um, to attend. We I, there's me and there's Mark. Um, I don't really know how he does his, but wherever you guys like most, go with whoever you like most. Um, we will have ours um, each week. Um, and I know that some of the times are difficult for some people. I'm going to try to have these recorded like I am now. Um, I don't know exactly how it's going to upload. Um, I'll work on that. Um, but when it comes to bonding attendance, yeah, just do your best to attend. Um, if you, Given that I do see who attends and who doesn't, don't make it a chronic thing. Um, if you miss a couple times, it's fine. Just let me know. Um, but other than that, try, do your best to attend. It is in your best interest. Again, I learned this course as with other people from the resources like Bonding and SI and the OC tutors. Um, so, did somebody ask a question? I can't see it as they come up. Let's see. What's my email? Um, I believe I, my email is at the bottom of some of the discussion posts that I've made. Um, it's just mhamper2017. Um, if you don't see it, just uh, uh, just message me through Canvas. I, I readily check it. Um, you know, I decided to take 19 credits, so I'm on my school shit all the time. Um, so if you send me a message through Canvas, um, I'll see it. Um, but yeah. My my email should be on the um, on on the discussion post that I've sent out. Are there going to be bonding assignments? <laughs> yeah, each week there's going to be a bonding assignment. Check your syllabus, the bonding syllabus for the specific schedule. Um, I wanted to make this section and mark uh, in the beginning of the week, Monday and Tuesday, because you have Monday through Friday to take it. Uh, we wanted to give you some insight into what you guys are going to be getting into, especially since bonding is ahead of lecture. Um, so definitely, I hope this uh, I hope this session um, 
was a good introduction um, into into the main concepts that um, you guys are going to get into. Get into. Um, so if anybody doesn't have any other specific questions, I'm going to go ahead and end this. No problem. All right. Hopefully I'll see you guys next week.